welcome back to Galton Parkway. You join me today for another layout update construction video and the subject of today's video is going to be bridges. Now I haven't had a conversation with one of my friends, Mr Mike Buick. We've discussed this bridge and it's always been a little bit of a sticking point for me. I've never been quite happy with it and I think now we've sussed out the reason why. This bridge, it kind of looks a little bit odd when you think about it. The bridge abutments are on one side there's a girder on one side and then it disappears into the side of a hill. It's almost like a combination of two different things. It's a tunnel and a bridge, but really it needs to be one or the other. So today I'm gonna to work on turning this into a bridge. That's gonna involve me cutting away some of the landscape at the back here, that you can see. I'll be bringing the embankment down to a lower level to enable me to create a bridge and create an abutment on the opposite side, which will continue the theme of the bridge and give it a more realistic feel that, that, that the layout is actually, the, the, the track goes over a bridge and the track goes under a bridge, rather than disappearing under a bridge and into some landscape which doesn't really quite work. So unfortunately, that means I'm gonna to have to hack some of this about. I'm gonna get out my trusty old kitchen knife and start chopping away at this. And I'll come back and show you when I've made a little bit of progress. Okay, so here we go. This is where I am so far. Sometimes you start one of those jobs and you think, oh God, have I done the right thing here? And this is kind of at that stage at the moment, but it will definitely be able to be sorted. I'm quite confident of that. So the one <laughs> issue I had is I couldn't quite remember what was underneath all of this when I built it up. So turns out there's a piece of baseboard there. So I'm going to need to chop that out to help make a bit of a, a, a visible... Um, almost a cut in down where the rails are. Um, I'm going to do that next, but firstly, I'm going to have a little bit of a hoover up. Um, a lot of this was built on top of expanding foam, so that's all going to need pulling out of that gap as well there. Um, right mess, but it's, it's all good fun and it will come good, I can guarantee it. So <laughs> I'm going to crack on now. Okay, so the devastation section or stage of this process is complete. I've now got to have a little bit of a hoover up and uh, tidy and see what we can do about getting this all to fit in scenically and making it look right. Um, big old challenge this, but I definitely think it's going to be worth it in the long run. So yeah, I'm going to kind of press on now. Um, made a little bit of a mess here, so I should probably get that tidied up. And yeah, I'll come back to you soon. <laughs>
okay so i've hacked everything apart now um what i'm going to do now is try and build some retaining walls so i will probably make these from wood i'll start off doing them with cardboard and then cut them onto wood just to make a more solid base um and then once those are done it's going to be a case of backfilling behind them and um creating uh, raised scenery areas just to get everything to mesh back in but um i know this looks drastic and it is drastic but bear with me i'm pretty sure this is going to look better than it was Okay, so over the course of a weekend, I have built this new bridge. Now, I haven't filmed myself making the bridge. The reason being is I'm not a scratch builder. I'm not very good at scratch building. Um, so this is kind of me at my limits with regards to scratch building, I think. But um, I'm happy with the way it's come out. My next job now is going to be to embed the scenery back around it. And I've got to have a little think about how I'm going to get the back all tidied up because obviously there's that area where it all transitions down and needs to go back around the bridge so that's where we are you can see through there i've managed to ballast the line which was a tricky job to do but that's all sorted and yeah i think the next job now is to start blending this back in and i'll start with this area here and this area here Okay, so I've got my trusty old plastering set up here. I've got this manky old tub that I always use for my plaster cloth. I've put down some old magazine papers around the area of the layout that I don't want to get any of this crud onto. This stuff is really messy. Um, so I'm going to begin now. First thing I'll do is just dampen down the paper that I've put in with a little bit of water. And that will just help the plaster take to it a little bit better. Now this plaster that I'm using is just stuff from the range. This it's really messy. I don't much enjoy doing this to be honest, but it's I find the easiest way to get quick terrain. So just cut it in small bits, um, douse it in water. The water I've used is kind of lukewarm. Work the plaster into the cloth, and yeah, you can see it goes all sort of tactile like that 
And it's just a case of layering it over the texture that I've made already. <laughs> Okay, so I've let this dry now overnight, but now the next day it's gone nice and rock hard and it's ready to start doing the scenic work on it. The first job that I always do with something like this is just to paint it brown, uh, just to give it a nice undercoat. So that's what I'm going to move on to next, paint it brown and it will give, obviously if you've got any little gaps that you miss along here or on your um, ground cover, it will it'll give a nice natural backdrop for it. So I'll move on to that and get that all painted in next. Okay, so that's that painted. One thing I like to do at this stage, whilst the paint is still tacky, is get some Woodland Scenics Blended Turf Earth Blend, um, and I will just sprinkle that on, and that gives another layer there, and it will dry into the paint whilst the paint's still wet. So this isn't all going to stick on, by the way, and it's going to be paint where some of it will come off. This stage and this paint goes off pretty quick. It's still, I would say, damp ish now. I, I'm filming this immediately after I've stopped painting, but there's not a lot of um, a lot of moisture to it at the minute. So I'm just pressing along the edges, just trying to get some of that blended through. Then you can see it starts to help the line between the old scenery disappear and the new scenery appear. So that will do for now. I'm going to move on to the little piece on the other side, which is just behind the paint pot. Okay, so it's the next day now and um, you can see that the ground cover is dried on this surface. My next job is going to be to put a little bit of PVA over this and start putting a base layer of static grass on. So I'm going to get on with that now and I'll show you the result once it's done. So I've got my base layer of static grass down. Um, that basically is my underlayer for which I'll put any vegetation on top of now. Um, provides a decent base and will hopefully start to blend things in. As you can see, it's already starting to look a little bit better. I'll let that dry now. Um, it's the stuff I've used is War World Scenics Straw mixed in with War World Scenics, um, I think, Spring Blend uh, mixed together to give the, the sort of light effect that I've got throughout the layout of a of vegetation that's coming towards the end of the summertime. Um, 
and starting to burn out and die. But yeah, there we go, that's where we are. And then it's gonna be a case of letting that dry and then I can start to layer on top of it. The other thing that I need to do is rebuild this. I've got a new pack of these on the way. This is the one from the old, uh, the old bridge. It's a little bit scruffy now, it needs tidying up. I gotta decide whether or not I um, go for painting it, giving it a different colour or whatever, but that won't go back in now. Um, but yeah, so another one of those come in and uh, I've got a decision to make on what to do from a colouring perspective with that. But yeah, no, I think my next task is going to be to start having a look at the bit over the back and getting the land form somewhat built up there, ready to take scenery. Okay, so I've skipped ahead a little from the last clip and what I've done is just go ahead and put the plaster cloth over at the back for where the embankments are going to drop away. Now, I didn't bother to film that. It's exactly the same process as you saw me doing for there and there. Um, what I next need to do is go ahead and clean up all this polystyrene that's everywhere. Made a bit of a mess. Um, I'm guessing probably the best thing for me to do next is tackle repainting that back scene um, blue, just to fill in the gaps there and get everything to join up. And then I can look at doing my brown base coat on the two pieces of outstanding scenery there that need completing. Um, I've had a new girder plate kit arrive, so I'm going to rebuild that and decide what I'm going to do with that. There's another girder plate that needs to be built there and then capping stones to go on the top there. I've got a retaining wall piece that needs to go in across the back there and another one that goes across the back on the other side. Uh, and then it's going to be a case of dressing the hill with more of this treatment. I've got all of the bushes that I saved from where I cut out that massive lump of hill and the trees. So it's all stuff ready to go back on there. So we're starting to see some progress now. Um, but yeah, I think now it's time for a good clean up. Okay, so I've painted the back blue now. I've just got the base layers to paint brown. They're going to start going through the same process that I did with these front pieces there. Uh, the, the blue was a bit of a pain to do actually. I got this big pot of blue paint and um, turns out it wasn't the right colour match for the painting I'd already done. So I must have mixed it with some white when I originally painted it. I forgot about that so it took me a little while. I was thinking oh, I'll paint this so it will dry and it will go nice and light like the other coat of, of down the rest of the layout and no I didn't. So I had to mix some white into it to get a colour match. But I think it's starting to look better already definitely with the light blue behind there now. So we'll get this brown on and uh, yeah, we're, we're getting there now. Slowly but surely we're getting there and then there'll be work with vegetation to tie it all in, grow it in and make it look natural. And I've uh, I put one of the new girders in there at the moment. So um, I just need to build another new girder to go over on the back section and then they can be glued into place. Uh, that one needs painting up and weathering as well. So yeah, getting there slowly but surely and I'll come back to you when I've got some brown down and uh, the first layer of grass on these. Okay, so I'm part way through putting all of the bushes and things back onto the uh, embankments and blending things through. Starting to come together a little bit better now, looking slightly more natural. There's uh, still a lot of work to do. Now, I appreciate in this video I haven't really shown you how I go about building these bushes and things, and that's mainly because the stuff was already all down when I um, ripped up the other part of the embankment, so I'm just literally plonking it back down. When I do the extension on the other side of the layout, which I'll be doing hopefully fairly soon, um, I, I will go into absolute sort of micro detail of how to do everything and how to achieve these effects. So, uh, so yeah, stand by for that, but at the moment, this is where we are and I'm quite pleased. So I have one last item that will need to be completed uh, behind the bridge now. I've got this uh, sheet here of retaining wall. And that is going to drop somewhere down there and will help improve the look as you look through the bridge. That will need painted in and lining up correctly. At the moment I've just very, very roughly whacked that in but it's all been uh, cut to size and is ready to go. And hopefully actually finish things off quite nicely. Okay, so you can see the bridge now in its more or less completed state. I have created a new girder. Underneath the girder, there's a uh, there's a beam that runs underneath it just to 
add a little bit that needs some detail and a little bit of weathering etc I'm fully bedding in um, aside from that everything seems to be pretty much in place now I've had a added a limited clearance sign there and uh, yeah I think it's all blending in quite nicely now we've got the foliage down in front of the abutments of the wall and the wing walls are all embedded and looking pretty good now so I'll get up a little bit closer now and show you some more of the detail so at the base of the wall between the void between the depot hard standing and the main line you'll see I've added quite a bit of foliage there just to try and make it overgrown look like it's been there for a while there's still a few little bits and pieces that need tidying up but on the whole I am pretty pleased with the way that's looking it seems to be coming out okay I've weathered the walls with some hand painting techniques, dry brushing and um, some powders too. To the back now you can see I've added another girder and you've got the bridge abutments over the other side which gives the feeling of the bridge. I think this is looking alright now, quite pleased with that. I think uh, it is definitely looking better than it was before. You can see there the way the scenery opens up and it cuts through. I think it's a lot more realistic now and I'm quite happy with it. Obviously there are still some rough edges on it that will need a little bit of tightening up here and there. But on the whole, I think it's pretty good so far. Yeah, and from this angle, uh, you can see the way that the line sweeps across the bridge. And I think you'd be hard pushed to tell, to be honest, that, there was, that it wasn't like this from the start. It's blended in quite nicely. Like I say, there are a few little bits and pieces that will need tightening up as I go along. But so far it's it's looking quite good i'm pleased with where we're at with it now uh, it's been an interesting project it's taken a long time uh it's not something that i've rushed well i say it's not something that i've rushed the main bridge structure i built in a weekend i got a bit keen with that and rattled through it and then the rest of it it's been a gradual process but so far i'm pretty pleased i think that the embankments sort of transition quite naturally through and give the kind of effect that I was looking for um, it's certainly more realistic to a prototype now rather than a weird tunnel bridge thing that disappeared into the side of a mountain which was never quite right to be honest so overall very pleased good project it was interesting as I say I'm not a scratch builder so it's not something that I'm perfect at I haven't got any fancy laser cutting equipment or cricket makers machines or whatever to do it it's all done by hand so there's never going to be a hundred percent perfect but it does offer a good representation and i don't think it's any worse than what was there before it certainly is, is a more realistic solution anyway i'd like to thank you for taking the time to sit and watch this video if you've got this far it's always a tricky one for me trying to decide how to put these videos together I know a lot of people like to see blow by blow how something's done. Uh, myself as a YouTube viewer, I'm more interested in somebody saying to me, oh look, this is, this is what I've done, here it is, this is what I've done, here it is. But um, I know that a, a large portion of the audience prefer to be shown stuff as it happens. So that's what I've tried to do here. And I think uh, I've documented this fairly well. Obviously, I acknowledge there are some gaps with, uh, with what I've done. Um, mainly around the vegetation etc and how I've actually produced that as previously alluded to in the video I will be going into detail on that when I build the extension finally I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time to subscribe to the channel and continue to view I disappeared for about three years and everybody has come back and has shown real interest in my train set and I find that really really humbling um, it, it's great just to come back it's given me the enthusiasm to keep processing and making these videos for you all to be able to see um, I'd like to thank everyone else that's taken the time to subscribe and taken the time to comment on the previous video I do try and get back to everyone but um, as I mentioned quite busy I've got quite busy family life at the minute with many children all over the place and uh, yeah it's it's tough to keep up with but I, I really do appreciate every single comment and I will try and get back to every single one that's left in the meantime I'm going to leave you now with a few running shots just showing you a couple of things going over the bridge so you can get a full idea of exactly how it looks with trains running over it um, still got some more ideas about how I might improve this scene but they'll come in a future layout update anyway Thanks again for taking the time to spend looking at my layout and I will speak to you all soon. Cheers. <laughs>